Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Dead Men Tell No Tales, which is a cooperative adventure game with a very, very cool theme. In this game, players are all members of a pirate crew who has basically disabled an enemy ship and is about to board it to Blunt to loot its lunder, <laughs> loot its and plunder the ship. But as you can see, because of all the cannon fire, the ship is on fire. So we've got to get over there, get the treasure, and get off quick before the whole thing explodes and sinks to the bottom of the ocean to Davy Jones's locker. But there's a problem. Wouldn't you know? The ship is haunted. It is full of skeletons and undead who are going to be trying to stop us every step of the way as we explore this sinking ship. So, let's jump right into it. I've already got the game set up here as a two-player game. And this game, I will be Jade, who has a special power of being able to eliminate two deckhands with one action. And Jen, the second player, will be Lydia L'Amour, who gets six actions every turn instead of five, like most players. Also, you know, and so at the beginning of the game, we, we put the board out. There's one deckhand, which are these adorable little skulls. Look how cute they are. Oh, they're so adorable. One little, uh, it's, you know, it's like a crew deckhand who might be a bother for us later, who just came out of this hatch. We're here on our little dinghies, ready to board the ship. And you can see the ship is already starting to burn. And so there's two yellow and two red spaces with question marks. I got to roll two yellows and two red dice to find out how hot the fire is burning here. Low numbers, please. Oh, that's not good. Oh, let's see. Yeah, those are some high numbers. Okay, so that is the random start. There's not much fire here. It's only a two, but over here we've got a four. Over here we've got a five, and over here we've got a four. Now the problem is, if we ever have to move these dice up to a six, that means the room, the fire is so hot in that room, it's about to explode. And we can only take so many explosions on this explosion track before the whole ship sinks and we die. So, right off the bat, we've got a problem. We've got to start fighting some of these fires and get those numbers lower before the fire continues to burn out of control based on what happens with the events. Now, one thing that'll help us with that is Jen, Lydia L'Amour, she, we all start with a randomly chosen item. I got a compass, which lets me do an extra move action for free every turn. Jen got a bucket, which can lower the fire die in an adjacent room. So Jen can fight fires without even having to go into a given room. So that's pretty handy. And you can see there's other items up here too. Heck, I might want to switch out to get the blanket, which I can uh, lower fire by two instead of by one every time I do it. There's a dagger, which allows us to more effectively fight the deckhands. There's a pistol, which lets us fight from adjacent rooms. There's a sword, which adds plus one to our strength when we're fighting the, the tough baddies. And there's rum, which is the equivalent of letting us rest without having to spend time to rest and recover our fatigue. So, we have a bunch of items. Anytime we want, we can grab those and swap them out for the ones we have. These are the ones we have randomly. And that's the setup. We are ready to go and start searching this ship while keeping the fire under control and stopping the spread of the undead. Because if we ever run out of these little skull undead markers, we lose the game because the ship is completely overrun. Like I said, if this explosion track ever fills up, we lose the game. And there's a couple other ways we could lose the game too. What we got to do to win the game, we've got to find four treasures and carry them back to our little dinghies and then get off the ship. And if we do that before time runs out with all the other stuff. So. Let's get going. I will be the first player, and most players get to do five actions, which are tracked by these little two-sided coins. Although, like I said, Lydia's special power is she gets six. So, what can I do? Well, I can spend these five actions to walk, to run, to lower the fire level in the room I'm in, to eliminate a deckhand, although whenever I eliminate deckhand, when I've spent an action, I eliminate two instead of one, because I'm extra good at fighting these little guys. I can pick up an item that's in a room. I can rest to lower my fatigue. Although at the beginning of the game, my fatigue is at zero, so I don't really need to rest. I can increase my battle strength by preparing for a fight. Right now, my battle strength is at zero, but I could spend time increasing it so I'm ready to fight big, tough, bad guys. Uh, or I can spend an action to dump the compass and grab one of these other items, including the bucket, if I want to grab it from Jen. So. Before, however, I start doing my actions, the first thing that happens on my turn is the search the ship phase, which means I draw tiles from the ship tile deck and add them wherever I want, as long as it's a legal placement, you know, making sure that doors line up appropriately. And it's interesting, at the beginning of the, normally at the beginning of your turn, you just take one tile and you add it somewhere on the board. 
But at the beginning of the game, to kickstart the game and get going, for the first couple of turns, everybody's first turn, they draw two tiles. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two tiles. And let's see, what do I got here? Uh, I'll take this one. And so now I can put the, I, this, is a, this, door, this room has three doorways. I can put it in, you know, I could put it here, or I could put it here, put it here. I mean, I can't go like this though, because then of course this doorway doesn't line up with this wall. Uh, and interestingly, this has a barrel in it, and this barrel is going to explode pretty quickly, which would raise, when a barrel explodes, it raises the fire value in a room adjacent to it. So probably one thing I don't want to do is put it like here, because if this barrel ever explodes, it would raise this five to a six, and well, that would be all she wrote. We do not want these things to hit a six. So, um, and probably, maybe I'll go on ahead and put it like this. Okay. And now, this space is blank. If this had a number, I would take a red die and put it here based on what the number is. But since it's blank, that means there's no fire in this room yet. So, you know, hopefully, but we won't have to worry about any fire in there for a while. But remember, at the beginning of my turn, in the, in the first round, I draw two tiles. So I have to draw another one now. And let's see, oh, it's another exploding barrel. And this room is on fire. Let's see, where am I going to put this? I will put this here. Interestingly, this is a dead end room as well. Once I put it down, that's really going to kind of limit my ability to explore and search. And that's another way we could lose. If we ever draw a tile and there is no legal way we can put it on the board, that means we instantly lose because we'll never be able to search the entire ship. Uh, you know, the ship has gotten us. I'll put this over here. I'm creating a dead end in this direction. No. Well, and the problem is that if this explodes, it raises that, and that's a high die. Hmm, I could go on ahead and put it up here. Yeah, like, I don't like any of these because I have all these high values. I'll go on ahead and put it here. So I basically create a dead end right there. And now this has a yellow two on it. So this room is on fire, although only at level two. Remember, once it gets up to six, that's when it's all over. So that's the first thing you do. Oh, also, I forgot. When you put a tile out, you also draw from, the game comes with a cloth bag, but of course we use the chicken cup. You draw a tile and put it into the room you've just revealed. So in the first room I revealed, there is a bottle of rum to be found, which can re recover my fatigue by four whenever I use it. But to get this thing, I got to go through this pirate, this skeleton pirate, who has an attack value of three. And then in this room, we have... A, oh, a saber. This makes us a better fighter permanently, but I got to beat a skeleton of four to beat that. All right, so now my turn can begin and I can start spending my action points. And there's not going to be much I can do out here on the dinghy, so I think I'll spend my first action point to simply <clears throat> walk. Or should I run? <sighs> I do want to get into position and start fighting the spread of these fire quick. So I could spend... I'm the green player, one action, two action to get over here, and then three, four, five to get this fire level down, as an example. <clears throat> or I could spend my first action to get rid of my compass <clears throat> to replace it with a blanket so that when I get here, I can fight the fire more effectively. Let's see here. Um, but my compass lets me move around for free too, so I, I guess I'll just keep the compass. I'm not worried about that. So. Now my next question is, am I just going to walk, which means I spend an action to only move one space, or am I going to run, which means I can move two rooms, but I suffer two extra fatigue. My fatigue is at zero. I want to get going quick, so I think I will run. My first action is going to be a run, and I get to move two rooms. So I'm going to go one, two. But every time you enter a room with fire, you have to suffer fatigue because it's tiring to move into a room that's on fire. Now, the amount of fatigue I'm going to suffer is equal to the fire level of the new room compared to the old. There's no fire where I was. There's two fire in this room. So when I moved here, that two minus zero means I just took two fatigue. But remember, I'm running. So in this first action that I'm doing, and I'm just going to flip this here to indicate I've spent my first action. Now I'm, I'm running, so I get to move a second, and I'm going to move in here. And now I've gone into a very hot room. Five minus two is three. My fatigue has gone up one, two, three more. And remember, because I ran, my fatigue has gone up two more even. And so, my fatigue is, I'm already halfway to being totally fatigued. If I ever go all the way around this, I die. I die of exhaustion. I work myself to death. So that's something I have to bear in mind. I mean, I might want to, 
going ahead and grab the rum later so that I can rest for free, although I can always use an action to, to rest. Now, another interesting thing, because I, my fatigue is up here to seven, I've already passed five, that means I can no longer enter a room that's five. I would not be able to walk into this room now because I'm too fatigued. If I get more, I won't be able to enter a room with four. So, but now that I am in here, what I can do is my next action is I am going to lower the level of the fire in here. So now we're down to a four. Okay. And I will spend another action and lower it down to three. Another action, lower it down to two. And you know what the heck? I will spend another action, my final action, and lower it down to one. And now, because I've got the compass, I get to make one free walk or run action this phase. So I'm just going to go on ahead and use the compass. You tap it to indicate you used it. And I'm just going to walk back over here so I'm back at the beginning. So this fire is well under control. We don't have to worry about that. And that was it. My turn is over. Now, at the end of your turn, you draw an event card. And let's see what our first event is. All right. Wow, well, that's lucky. What this means is every room that has a five die, either a red or yellow, and remember at the beginning, this was a red five, every room that matches this, the fire increases by one. So if I hadn't come here and put this down, it would have, it would have turned to a six and this room would have exploded and that would have been very bad right from the get-go because the room explodes, our explosion meter moves up, the fire in the adjacent rooms increase by one, and the room becomes impassable and no one can ever walk through that room again. So it's a good thing I put that fire down. And as it is, we, none of the other fires are fives, either reds or yellows, so we get to ignore this. Now, there's always going to be a die to potentially make the fire go up if there's a match, and then there's also an icon. Now this icon is, well, kind of lucky. This means no bad event happened. No more deckhands spawned, no skeletons moved around, etc., etc. What happens is, once I've drawn three of these, the things with the question mark, that means it'll be time to reshuffle the event deck and start all over. So, I've just drawn one of the question marks. And that was my turn, and now it is Jen's turn. I used up all my actions, so we're moving on to Jen. First thing she's got to do is, she's got to draw two tiles and place them. And remember, normally you only draw one, but at the beginning of the game you draw two. So, she's got a red two, with, and it's a two-way door. Where is she going to put this? Let's go ahead and put it up here. Hmm. Or, no, can't put it there because, again, that's not legal. But yeah, let's just go ahead and put it up there. And so uh, the fire is a two, is a red two. And we find out what's in this room, what awaits us, and it, oh, this is, all right, I forget what his name is. This is the, the captain of the pirate ship, the dread pirate Fromm, Captain Fromm. Now, this is an optional thing. It's interesting, the game has a lot of ways you can increase the difficulty. You can give yourself a target of more treasures. By default, you have to get at least four treasures, but you could set yourself a target of five or six before you win. You can also remove some of these skulls, so the, the deck will get overrun quicker. You can set it so that you spend more turns drawing two at a time. And you can also put Captain Fromm in the, in the draw pile, which I've done. So whenever he comes out, I flip him. And he's on his four side, so he's not in a bad mood. He could have been a level eight guy, a super tough guy to beat, but he's a level four. He goes into the room, and when you draw him, another thing gets put in that room again. So let's see what else is in this room. It's some rum guarded by a level four. So there are actually two big, bad, tough boss skeletons in that room for me to beat. Okay, and then Jen's got to draw another tile. And let's see, okay, it's a level three with another powder keg ready to explode, and it's a two way. Let's see. So now, this is interesting. It is not legal. You know what? Actually, thinking about it, I would have been a bit smarter to put this over here. Since this room, you can't travel north because this was a dead end. So that would have been a, a better way to keep our flexibility open going that way. So let's say Captain Fromm is over there. So now, where am I going to put this? I will, let's see, it's, a, it's, a, it's an intersection. I could just put this like this. And that would close off. But see, now, there's, a, there's a real danger for how you expand. You want to keep your options open. If I do this, then there are only three ways I can expand this thing. So, although, uh, yeah, so I don't think I want to necessarily, uh, so I'll go ahead and go like this so that the ship can continue to expand north of these rooms there. Okay. And there's a level three fire in this room. And um, we have a new bad guy. And it's a level five and a, guarding another cutlass. 
Okay, it's interesting. There's a whole bunch of these hatches, which when you put a hatch down, that immediately spawns another one of these little skull guys. But completely randomly, we're not seeing very many hatches this game. This game, we're seeing a lot of skeletons. You know, the game can play out differently every time you play, depending on what you draw. So this is a very different a pirate ship we're exploring with different challenges than might otherwise be. It's interesting. We're not getting very many of these little skulls. So Jade's special power of being able to take out the deckhounds really fast is kind of not very useless. I think she might want to switch away from this compass and grab the sword to make up for the fact that we're going to have to do a lot more um, you know, skeleton fighting than normal. So that's really interesting. But anyway, so Jen has placed two tiles on the board. There's more stuff out there. And now Jen can start going and she gets six actions. That's her special power. So. For starters, what is she going to do? <laughs> and unfortunately, we have yet to find a single treasure. We found there's rum, and there's a cutlass, and there's a more rum, and another cutlass. But none of these guys are guarding treasure. So, yeah, the, the treasure's in here somewhere, I promise. But we're going to have to keep searching until we find it. So, where is Jen going to go? I've got this fire under control. These fires aren't too bad. This four isn't looking too good. Now, uh, and let's see. This room and this room where there's the, the exploding barrels, these are problematic. If this fire ever gets up, remember, if a fire gets up to a six, boom, the room explodes, it, it's gone, you flip the tile, you go up the explosion meter. In this room, though, if this fire ever gets up to five, this powder keg will explode, which will trigger, you know, move us up the explosion meter, and it'll make this, it, you know, it, it'll go out this door to make this go higher, and then this room could still explode at a six. So this room and this room are kind of problematic because. We're running the risk. So I think, although to get in and deal with these rooms, we have to fight some pirates. Although it would be good to get a uh, saber. So I think Jen is going to try and move up here and get into position to fight this guy, get a cutlass, and um, you know, maybe deal with some fire along the way, etc., etc. So is she going to run and, inc and increase her fatigue? Yeah, I think so, because there's just not much time. So Jen's first action of her six is that she is going to run. So she takes two fatigue going from a zero to a two. Now, by the way, um, oh, I forgot. Well, I reduced this all the way down to one. When I moved back into here, since that wasn't increased, I had to take one more fatigue. If I had left this at two, moving from a two to a two means I wouldn't have taken any fatigue, but I forgot. I took one more fatigue there going from a one to a two. So anyway, so Jen just took two fatigue and then she's going to, um, uh, let's see, she's going to use, actually, you know what? Hmm. No, she's not going to run. She's just going to walk. So she's moved one. She took two fatigue. That was her first action. Then before she does her next action, she's going to use her bucket, which lets her lower the fire die in an adjacent room. So she could lower this to a three, which means she'll suffer less fatigue when she moves in here, which is what she's going to do. She's going to lower this to a three. And so the bucket is used. And then her second action will be now she will run. No, no, no. She, her, hmm. All right, so she's used this. And by the way, using the item was, um, no, that was not an action. You, you, know, you have to spend an action to swap them, but you can use them for free. So her second action is, she knows she's going to come up here and she has to fight this guy. I think she's going to spend a little bit of time preparing. So she is going to spend an action increasing her battle strength. And then she's going to spend another action to increase her battle strength again. So now, the, what's going to happen is, when she, as soon as she, you're ever in a room with a pirate, you immediately have to fight them, and you roll this d6, a standard one through six. You roll this, and you add your current combat strength, if you want to. You don't need to. And the total has to be equal to or greater than the skeleton. So with Jen having a strength of two, that means she just needs to roll a three, four, five, or six. So she's got a pretty good chance of beating that guy. You know, there's only a 30% chance she would fail. So, I think she feels she spent enough time preparing to go fight him. It's going to be a little bit risky. Now, Jen is going to spend another action. And is she going to walk or is she going to sprint? I don't think she wants to build up fatigue like I have. So she's going to spend an action and she's going to walk. And now the difference between these two is one. So that means she took one more fatigue. Then she's going to spend another action and she's very going to calmly walk in here. And now she still has one more action to spend. But whenever you find yourself in a room with a, with a pirate, 
Now, and again, these are, these are deckhands. They don't count as pirates. You know, Jen could have spent an action fighting this guy, but he was, he's not really much of a threat right now. Jen wants to get up here. So as soon as she walked through the door, she immediately had to fight him. So that means she rolls the die, and she's hoping... Well, if she could just roll a 5 or a 6, she doesn't have to use her combat. So let's just, let's just roll a 6. Show us a 6. That's a 4. That's not quite good enough. So, Jen has a choice. She could either lose the fight, which means um, she would suffer fatigue equal to the difference. She would suffer one fatigue. And then, she, and then we would see what the skeleton would do. The skeleton might run away, she might be forced to run away, etc., etc. Or she can pump this four up. Now, unfortunately, she can't spend just one of this. Whenever you spend your combat readiness, you have to spend all of it. So Jen is going to spend all of it. And so that turned this four into a six, which beat the five, which means Jen just defeated this pirate. And this cutlass comes down here and gets permanently added to her combat. It's, it goes to the furthest left space, which pushes her up here. And so now that means Jen always has, at the very least, plus one. And if she you know, levels herself up some more, gets prepared for fights, after the fight is over, if she uses this, it always comes back down here. So Jen is now permanently a better fighter for having that cutlass. And now there's nobody in the room, so I think the last action Jen will do is she'll just go on ahead and fight this so it goes from a 3 to a 2, so we're less likely to um, hit a 5 here on this. All right, and so that was Jen's turn. Very, very successful. She had a big old fight. She's, she's stronger. Me, I narrowly averted disaster. I would say that was a pretty good first round. And now, at the end of Jen's turn, once again, we have an event. Any red 2s are going to increase. And in fact, well, that was a bit of a bummer. Jen just created this red 2, and so it's gone right back up. And this red 2 over here also is going to go up. Now, actually, strictly speaking, you're supposed to resolve from left to right um, because, you know, you can sometimes get into chain reactions and stuff like that. But anyway, it didn't matter in this case. But anyway, so these two rooms have gotten a little bit hotter, and this icon means that every room where there is a, a hatch that has a crew member on it, will get to expand more crew into adjacent rooms. And so it's kind of a shame. If Jen had stopped and killed this guy on her way through here, this room would be empty, and that means it wouldn't spawn anymore. But because Jen left this little skull, this room is now... The skull stays here, but every adjacent room gets a skull. 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 Now, there's some restrictions to that. Uh, a adjacent room doesn't get a skull. If, you know, if this room had already had a skull, it, um, then they're equal. Adjacent rooms only get skulls if the adjacent room has fewer skulls than the spawning room. So, you know, if, if this room had already had two skulls from earlier, this room spawning would not put another skull over here as an example. But as it is, we've suddenly gone from one skull to four skulls. And that's not good. Although it's still a shame because Jade's special power is, with one action, she can get rid of two deckhands in the same room. And right now, there's a whole bunch of singles all over the place. So her power is not so great right now. Ouch. Okay. But anyway, that was the end of that round, and now it is Jade's turn again. So she's got all her actions back. And now, remember how I was saying there's several ways you can increase the difficulty of the game? One of them is putting the, the pirate captain in here, which I, in the cup, which I did. Another way you can increase the difficulty is to... Normally, it's only on the first turn of the game that you put two tiles into effect. And then for the rest of the game, you're only putting out one tile every turn. But if I wanted to, I could, keep, I could say, you know what, let's increase the difficulty. I could put two more tiles on the board. Because that means the game just escalates faster and faster and faster, and it gets trickier and trickier. And um, you know what? I don't think I necessarily want to take on the extra difficulty of this. I was originally planning to, but this game has kind of quickly evolved into a tougher fight than I thought was going to be. As you know, we're you know um, we got a lot of fire all over the place. We've got all these big tough skeletons. You know, Jade is not very good at fighting. She's not going to be able to really leverage her special power at all. So I think. We're going to say this is an easy version of the game, which means we only have to get four treasures, but it was, its difficulty was increased a little bit because we've got the... Oh, no, what the heck? Let's go on ahead. Let's just still do the original plan. So, I'm making the game a bit more difficult for us, and hopefully a bit more fun for you guys, because a lot more stuff is going to happen. I'm going to continue with the drawing two tiles. But you know what? I'm going to do that in the extended playthrough, because I'm at 25 minutes now. I've kind of shown you all the basics. I've shown you how to walk and run, lower fire, haven't eliminated any deckhands, although I've shown you why you should be doing it, because since I didn't do it, we had a little explosion there. Um, <clears throat> I haven't picked up anything. Oh, actually, um, that's not true. Actually, Jen did pick up. Jen had to pick up this cutlass. 
Oh, you know what that means? That means on Jen's last turn, her last action was to put this down to a two, but then it fell back up to a three. I'm sorry, Jen's last action was to pick this cutlass up. Oopsie. So she never put this to a two, but that didn't really matter because, heck, it, it was a three. So, all right, so it didn't really change anything anyway. So we picked stuff up. I haven't rested, and I'm probably going to need to rest before too long because my I can't I in a little bit I'm not going to be able to move into rooms that have a, a fire level of four, and increasing your battle strength and then swapping items because maybe I don't need this compass. Maybe I need a means. Maybe I need that sword to protect myself because at any time these skeletons might start moving around and start chasing after me, the big ones, and I'm not in a position to fight at all. But I'm about to start my next turn, but first I'm going to play two tiles instead of one because I'm insane. But if you want to see that, you can hit the little eye up in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough. Or alternatively, you can go to Final Thoughts. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.